Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Dominic and I'd like to welcome you all to another episode of Spotlight Game of Thrones, the series in which we take a look at some of the characters who feature in the A Song of Ice and Fire novels but are yet to be seen on the hit HBO show. So, if you love Game of Thrones and want to know more about the world and its characters outside of the TV show, you've come to the right place. In today's episode, we'll be continuing our look at the Targaryen dynasty. Last time we examined King Jaehaerys Targaryen, first of his name also known throughout the Seven Kingdoms as Jaehaerys the Conciliator. Now, it's widely accepted that Jaehaerys I was pretty much the best King Westeros could ever hope for, and so anybody succeeding him would certainly have big shoes to fill. His successor, and the man we're going to be talking about today, is none other than his grandson, King Viserys Targaryen, first of his name. Now, although Viserys inherited a very prosperous kingdom from his grandfather, and continued much of that prosperity throughout his own reign, he also unwittingly sowed the seeds that would lead to the downfall of House Targaryen and the death of their dragons. The ancient Valerian house would never again be as powerful as it was under his rule. Viserys ascended to the throne in 103 AC and, as stated, things were good. The treasury was full, there was more dragons than there had ever been and more Targaryens to boot. Too many Targaryens in fact, but we'll get to that soon enough. It should also be noted that Viserys was the last Targaryen to ride Balerion the Black Dread until the dragon's death of old age in 94 AC. He never took another dragon afterwards. King Viserys was a good man, described as amiable, open-handed and eager to please. He was plump and pleasant and his generosity made him a well-loved figure in the realm amongst the nobility and the small folk alike. However, despite all of this, it would prove to be those closest to him that would create the biggest headache for both the king and the realm. You see, Viserys' firstborn child was a daughter named Rhaenyra, whom he conceived with his first wife, Queen Emma Arryn. He would eventually go on to have a son with Queen Emma, however, both the child and the queen would not survive the birth. Viserys loved the Princess Rhaenyra greatly and he groomed her for rule from a young age, eventually going so far as to name her his successor. Disregarding the precedents made clear in the Great Council of 101 that the male line is always considered higher than the female. Things became even more complicated when after the death of his first wife, Viserys wed Lady Alicent Hightower, his grandfather's former nursemaid and daughter of the Hand, Sir Otto Hightower. Queen Alicent gave Viserys the son he had long wanted in Prince Aegon, as well as a daughter in Princess Helena and another two sons in Prince Aemond and Prince Daron. Despite the pressure to name Prince Aegon as his new heir however, Viserys stuck to his guns and insisted that Princess Rhaenyra was still his successor and that the matter was settled. But of course, things in Westeros are rarely that easy and the beginnings of a divide in his court began to surface with one group being referred to as the Queen's Party and another as the Party of the Princess. These two opposing factions would eventually come to be known as the Greens, those who favoured the Queen's line, and the Blacks, those who favoured Rhaenyra's, stemming from the fact that at a great tourney, Queen Alicent had worn green and Princess Rhaenyra had worn the black and red of House Targaryen. And then there was the king's brother, Prince Daemon Targaryen. Daemon Targaryen was dashing, daring and dangerous, quick to both boredom and violence. He won his knighthood at the young age of 16 like Maegor before him and for his prowess he was awarded the Valerian Steel Sword Dark Sister. Although the two seemed to respect one another, King Viserys and his brother Daemon had a tenuous relationship. Daemon, unhappy with his wife and his life in the Vale was made captain of the city guard where he formed the gold cloaks. He left King's Landing for Dragonstone after two years however when his brother made Rhaenyris his heir after Daemon was heard drunkenly mocking the death of Viserys' infant firstborn son. On Dragonstone Daemon impregnated his lover Viseria and wanted to give her a dragon egg but was forced by Viserys to return the egg and also to return to his wife Lady Rhea of House Royce. Daemon sent Viseria away to Lys but she died at sea along with his unborn child. Daemon Daemon eventually left to forge his own kingdoms by capturing the Stepstones and declaring himself King of the Narrow Sea, but he soon grew bored of the title and returned to King's Landing where he gave up his crown to his brother. It was only six months however until Daemon would be exiled again, this time for supposedly taking the virginity of Viserys' beloved daughter, Princess Rhaenyra. Viserys eventually married Rhaenyra to Laenor Velaryon, who was the son of Lord Corlys Velaryon and heir to Driftmark. Funnily enough, Prince Daemon would also, against his brother's wishes, go on to marry Lord Corlys Corlys Velaryon's daughter, Lena, with whom he'd have two twin daughters named Baella and Reyna. However, Lady Lyanna would not survive the birth of his firstborn son and neither would the infant. Princess Rhaenyra and Lenor were not close and it is understood that Lenor had long preferred the company of men and the two spent very little time together. Rhaenyra would go on to give birth to three children in Jaceris, Lucerys and Joffrey. But despite the fact that both she 
and Lainor were of Valerian ancestry, none of the children bore their resemblance, and instead each had the dark hair and pug nose of Rhaenyra's sworn sword and companion, Sir Harwin the Strong. Eventually, Rhaenyra's husband, Lainor, was murdered by a friend over a quarrel in Spice Town in dubious circumstances, which freed up Rhaenyra to marry her uncle, Prince Daemon. Rhaenyra finally gave Daemon the son he had long wanted, whom they also named Aegon after the Conqueror. The same name Viserys had given to his eldest. They also had a second son, this one they called Viserys. King Viserys, now older and less concerned with governance, injured himself on the barbs of the Iron Throne. This wound became infected and was severe enough that it required the amputation of two fingers. However, even this was not enough to stall the king's declining health. In the year 129 AC, after regaling his grandchildren of stories of the Conqueror, Viserys went to sleep and did not again wake. He had ruled for 26 years over the most glorious age of the Targaryen dynasty, but his death had also created a vacuum that could only be filled by fire and blood. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Spotlight Game of Thrones. Remember you can find previous episodes on the channel as well as a playlist with all of Season 1's episodes included. You may have also noticed that I've adopted a new editing style as I recently purchased a much more robust editing software than the one that I was previously using. So hopefully I will be able to deliver videos of a much higher quality for you guys to enjoy. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon.